What's going on guys? In this video, I wanna go over tying surgical knots. I'm gonna teach you guys the right way to do it and also what things to keep in mind to help you really shine during your surgical rotations. So the three techniques you guys need to have down, two-handed, one-handed, and instrument ties. Two-handed, this is your bread and butter. Some attendings are gonna want you to demonstrate a two-handed tie before you move on to one-handed. I don't necessarily agree with this, as you can be good at one-handed and bad at two-handed or vice versa, but I understand their rationale. They want to make sure that you understand the basic principles of tying strong square knots. One-handed, this is the fastest to tie, but it's the hardest to learn. And instrument ties is when you're actually suturing. So you'll have your needle driver in one hand, and the quickest way in these cases is to actually tie with the instrument. So I'll teach you guys how to do that as well. It's important to get proficient at the instrument tie, otherwise you may lose your privilege in closing until you can do so appropriately. Okay, on to a few general principles. The first is knot security. Without getting into the theoretical details of stretch and friction, what you need to know is that proper technique is the most important factor for having secure knots. Throw solid square knots. Also, more throws will lead to better knot security, but it's a balance because you don't want to be throwing too many knots. Having excess suture under the skin is just increases the risk for inflammation and possibly infection. Also, more throws lead to better knot security. And lastly, between monofilament versus braided suture, monofilament, which is just much more slippery, is going to require more throws to achieve the same knot security, whereas braided has a little bit more friction, so you can get the same knot security with fewer throws. The surgeon's knot. Sometimes you should use a surgeon's knot, but not always. All it is, is during the first throw, you loop the suture twice in the same direction. Now this allows you to tie under tension and prevent slippage, so that when you lock it by throwing in the opposite direction, it prevents an air knot. Why do you not always use it? Because excess material. So generally speaking, you want to use the least amount of suture possible to achieve a secure knot. Excess suture will either irritate the patient if it's above the skin or if it's below the skin, it will increase inflammation because it's excess for material. Next is the square versus slip knot. So a slip knot is when you throw two throws in the same direction. Similar to the surgeon's knot, this lets you secure without locking and prevent air knots. Square knots are what you want to be tying to lock each suture in place. So things to keep in mind, first is efficiency. Efficiency is the name of the game in the OR. All of your movements should be deliberate and intentional. Tying a one-handed knot while moving your post, this defeats the purpose of a one-handed knot. So once you get the hang of tying, focus on eliminating unnecessary movements and not tugging too hard. The reason you do not want to tug too hard is that if you're tying over a delicate vessel, you need to be able to tie a knot securely without actually pulling on the vessel and damaging it. Next, practice as much as you can. So what I would do is I would grab these ties from the OR, ask the, ask the nurse, see if they have any expired or any extra ones, and I would wrap it around my water bottle or a notebook, and I'd be tying either one-handed or two-handed while watching TV or listening to lectures. Do what works best for you. Also, once you're comfortable with one direction, Teach yourself the other. Learn both right and left-handed techniques. Being able to tie one or two-handed with either side will serve you well in the OR. So first I'm gonna show you a two-handed. So what I do to make sure I start off square is actually crisscross, and the bottom one goes to the right, the top one goes to the left. Um, figure out what system works best for you. This just helps me throw the first knot square. So I'll show you first with your left hand. Start off by grabbing the suture like so. Pass the suture to your other finger in the opposite direction. Close with your thumb. So again, opposite direction, close with your thumb. Now you have this ring that can move back and forth. So I want you to move to the other side of the ring. Then with this end, pass it between, pinch, and bring it back. So again, we're like this ring, pass it through, pinch, bring it back. So next you need to throw the opposite direction throw. So now we'll do the same thing but with your thumb. So instead of over your index, we're going to put it over your thumb. Again, pass this in the opposite direction. Make a 
loop. Pinch, bring it back. Now when you're actually laying down these ties, push down with your index finger, so that's gonna prevent air knots from, from forming. Again, index. Pinch, bring it back. And then one more side with the thumb. Okay, so that was using your left hand. Right hand, same exact concept. Remember your index. Okay, now your thumb. So again, wrap it around your thumb. Bring the other end in the opposite direction. Make a ring. Pass it through, pinch, bring it back. And one more time, index. Pinch, bring it back, pass it through, push down with your index. Thumb. Make a ring, oops, make a ring, pinch, pass it through, tie it down. All right, guys, so this is the, the suturing kit that I used to practice. Let me show you what it would actually look like as if you were suturing on skin. So let's do two-handed knot. So again, I crisscross like so. And there you go.